Last week we saw that we could put some copper sulfate into a petri dish and grow this kind of crystal structure out of copper to remind you what we're doing here. In the solution we have copper 2 sulfate, so that's CuSO4, and we've attached a negative electrode here in the center, positive electrode on the edge. Here we were using a 10 volt potential difference between the two. And because of this, the positive copper ions are going to be attracted to the center, and the sulfate ions are going to be attracted towards the copper tape that we put on the rim of the petri dish. Let's watch that again. So as this happens, we've got ions wandering around here in the bluish solution, and when they strike a place that already is occupied by metallic copper crystal here, they attach to it. And you can see the complex border that's forming as this crystal grows. This is at several times actual speed. So in this video, we're going to investigate a little bit about how to simulate this in a computer. This structure is limited by diffusion. Remember, diffusion is the process that happens where molecules of a material move from an area of higher concentration to an area of low concentration due to random motion of the molecules. We saw this with food coloring last week. So we're looking at a process called diffusion limited aggregation. This means aggregation is when things stick together and the thing limiting the sticking together is the diffusion of molecules in the medium. Here's an example simulated in a computer. This is on a grid of 256 by 256 pixels and we're using a random walk process to generate this structure. How does it work? We have an array so just a grid with many locations or pixels in it. And let's take a look at one local location. I'm going to zoom in on just one pixel here with its local neighborhood. This pixel of interest, I'll call it IJ, which I can loop over so I can go to different places in the grid. I want to know what does it mean to be a neighbor of I and J. So one thing it might mean is these four neighbors that are north, south, east, and west of the pixel we're interested in. Or we might include all of the diagonal neighbors as well. These both have names that's worth knowing. It makes it easier to talk about them. This one is called the von Neumann neighborhood, and this one is called the Moore neighborhood. So you'll see those sometimes in grid-based simulations of things. We can use either of these in this simulation. I'm going to be using the von Neumann neighborhood in the simulations that you see. So here's the process. We're going to make an array fairly big and put a seed in the center of the array. So you could imagine all of these locations are zero and the red is a one. Then we're going to pick another place some distance away and put a one there and let, then let that one take a random walk. So it's moving around and we're seeing, does it ever hit the seed? So is one of its neighbors a one? If it is, then it sticks and it becomes part of the seed. And after that, we can choose another location and let it walk. And if it gets here, then we fill it in. We repeat this many times. And when that happens, we start a new walker over and over again till we get this kind of structure. So here you can see several thousand pixels aggregating as I start them some distance away from what's already existing here as a crystal and growing. And we can repeat that until we reach the edge of the container. Safety note. You want to be careful when your crystal has grown all the way to the size of the petri dish. You're going to then have, remember this crystal's made of copper, you're going to have a connection all the way from the negative electrode to the positive electrode, so you're going to end up with a short circuit. So try to stop your circuit before this happens, or uh, you might have some sputtering, current spikes. The power supply has a built-in relay that's going to turn off the current when it spikes like that, but we'd still like to avoid that. So grow till you reach the edge, but then cut off the power. Here's an example, photo credit to Wikipedia user Kevin R. Johnson. This is just what we did, copper sulfate and deposition of the metallic copper. You can see these kind of structures in some ferns on coral reefs. Also, if you pass a high voltage through some lucite plastic, you can get dielectric breakdown patterns, also in lightning blood vessels or tubes in your lungs. Here's a photo credit William Ewing picture of the heart, blood vessels, and these also seem to exhibit this kind of fractal structure that results from the same sort of processes. 
So uh, we're going to run this and see if we can measure the fractal dimension, which we will discuss in a future video.